What's up, guys? We're live. This is the Toasty Podcast. My name's Sky. I'm Matty B. We're doing this a second time over because I have no idea how to use this freaking app. And uh, we're talking tendies, we're talking diamonds, and we're talking going to the moon today. Let's get toasty. Let's do it. I, I see, I knew there was another one. I was like, what is it, dude? Because you like couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. It was just, you know, whatever. All right, guys. Dude, welcome yeah. to the first ever live recording. Well, uh, technically, it's the second <laughs> ever. <laughs> dude, we just can't get this right, dude. It's well, hard. Hey, we're, it's hey, freaking we're doing hard. it, though. Like yeah. you said, most podcasts, what, last 16 episodes? Well, yeah, but they don't go live. This is a live thing. I, we're doing it, we're sorry, doing it harder like, every every month. We, do, we challenge ourselves by doing... Doing something else. Yeah, that's true. That's in a good point. way. And I just, I really got to give it, give it to the streamers because I didn't know how difficult it is to keep it going. Of course, I'm doing this all from an iPad, so that's a little bit different. Whatever. But whatever. So I just wanted to get into hedge funds. I wanted to tell you guys about them because it's a huge deal right now and everyone's into it. Yes. Uh, everyone and their mom is investing. I was just telling Matt, like everyone that used to sell, you know, Advocare or whatever marketing scheme they have on Facebook Messenger from your high school <laughs> is now trading. So here we are, and that's the reason I got out of it. If you want to know more about trading, you can see my other podcasts. Uh, I did them a long time ago. My basically. thing is, so Robinhood is is a basically a trading platform that you can use if you just as, as a quote unquote entry level platform, right? That's what it's marketed as. I mean, yeah. The thing the thing with Robinhood is like eight eight years ago, twelve years ago, whenever it came out. Uh-huh. It was designed, literally their their whole slogan was democratize investing, right? Yeah. Their idea was to give you an app, because everyone loved apps at that point. It's all of our generation of and, and younger. Right. Um, give you an app where you can trade, and it's zero commission. And zero commission meant you don't go to Fidelity and pay $5 per trade right. like you were doing. Yeah. I mean, it took forever okay, for anyone first, else to jump when, on okay, board. When I first started trading on E-Trade, it was in the seventh grade. I'll never forget it. It was, I want to say it was thirteen dollars a trade. What? Yeah. So you should have used Trade King. That's what everyone. That's what all the. Uh, this was the back OGs in. Used, I mean, this is back like in me. like <laughs> two thousand five. So. Oh yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. No, nobody had free trading back then. No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So two thousand eight, maybe, is when Robin Hood. I can't remember. Maybe you guys can help me out. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to see your comments, by the way, because uh, I have that turned off. And now so. it's like, sorry, nobody charges for trading. No, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. Robinhood changed the of. world of investing. Okay. And here we are getting pissed at Robinhood and hating on them because they stopped us from trading. Now, here's the, the reason. It's literally the exact same reason we did it in the first place. They have a lot of backing, money-wise, mm-hmm. from big institutions. Imagine that. Those same institutions yeah, exactly. that would be into hedge funds and everything else, right? And so they have to follow them. I mean, it makes sense. It's just more people involved in the stock market. and Yeah. People are easy to manipulate. So the less the less money the hedge fund makes from Robinhood, the more um, money that Robinhood has to have in their quote unquote bank, yeah. if that makes sense. So when people start short, like ruining a short that tons of hedge funds were into and millions of dollars was in right. shorting GameStop, right? Uh-huh. Which means it's going to go down. Which means they were expecting GameStop to lose the whole time. Right. They're betting on it. But they're not just betting on it because hedge funds have some control. They're actually betting on it and then guaranteeing their win by pulling their, you know, political basically lobbying is what it is. Yeah, just picking up the phone, honestly, and calling <sighs> other hedge funds. Hedge, hedge funds, funds and managers. saying, hey, you're not doing this. You're shorting the stock, right? Yeah. So then you got this Wall Street Bets guy who, by the way, will be in the courtroom when they do their, their, their hearings that are coming up. Um. He decides, you know, we're going to change that. He's been in, getting into GameStop since 2019, the summer of 2019. So he's been he's been building his like his his portfolio of GameStop portfolio, his like take stake in GameStop uh-huh. since like two, summer of 2019, right? Yeah. And here we are, and he finally got everyone on board. And everyone's like, heck yeah, diamonds, tendies, to the moon, you know, all that stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm actually on board with it. I can't lie to you. And yeah. I actually still own AMC and Nokia, and I know it's 44% down. I'm okay with that. 
because there was a point. There was a point we were making. Yeah. And you know what's funny? This would not have happened. This could not have happened if Trump was still in office. Why is that? Because people from both sides were involved. And if Trump got out and gave a press conference or put on Twitter, heck yeah, you guys are doing great sticking it to the hedge funds. Because uh-huh. he would have done that. He, yeah. I guarantee you he would have done that. And, it w- and, it and then everyone would have been like, oh, we hate Trump. No, screw yep. that guy. And no one would be and on board. Exactly. No one would have been and on board. And it would have just dissipated and things would have gone back to normal. Now, that's the thing is, do those hedge fund managers like kind of go, oh, man, kind of wish Trump was here to... Kind of like Help us out. Be a counter swing, Dude, right? I and it's hilarious. Just, I think that you're right. Wait. You're a right lot about of people that. No, no, that no. You're right. A lot of people are going to start realizing how much his policies affected them and how how good they were. I agree with you, including his uh, just his manner of speaking, really? just his bluntness, and because now it's just all back to political speak. Now it's it's instead of kids in cages, which is kind of a random thing. It's like. Joe Biden just announced he's putting kids back in, uh, back in cage, back in overflow centers is what they're calling them. What? Until they, That's until happening? Until they reach their parents. Hold on, explain yeah. that. Yeah. What the heck is that? Migrant kids that get separated from their parents, their quote unquote parents at the border. They may or may not be their parents. It's not like they do DNA, you know, paternity testing or maternity testing at the border to see if they're actually the kid's parents. You know what I mean? Oh gosh. So they separate the kids because like if a, if a, if an adult breaks the law and they happen to have their kid with them, they get separated. That's the way it happens with everybody, including U.S. citizens. So, But anyways, yeah, Joe Biden is putting those kids in overflow centers is what they're calling them. Overflow centers, right. concentration camps, whatever yeah. you want to call them, Exactly. Right? That's exactly. insane, dude. I'm not, okay, I don't know much about it, so I can't say that, like, right off the bat, but, but like. It's, it's. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, let's, if you're looking for this, it. Let's put this, like. So I where can you can see, see it, it yeah. <laughs> the iPad's kind of covering that. Uh, quick question. About the live stream. Do you want to do comments or no? No, I, I want to do comments. I have it off right now. So here's the deal. I would love that. That's the whole point of this whole thing. The yeah. whole point of us going live is to help you guys get involved, be interactive. I can answer questions. He can answer questions. Do you want to ask a political question? Obviously, that's not me. That's him. <laughs> but uh, besides that, like, it's new to us. And I'm using an app called Switcher Studio. Uh-huh. I've never used it before. Um, trial run, if you will. It's a nice app. It's great. I can do all these like switching stuff and blah 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 blah. You know, easy from the iPad. Uh-huh. That's the reason I have it. It's because it's from the iPad. But we have to figure something else out because I still want to be able to comment. Can you? No. What if you? Oh, I just thought of something. You could get on your phone and use it that way. So get on the live stream uh-huh. and read comments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like moderate. That's what that. I was thinking. I was like, man, I actually should have brought the iPad so I could. That's what I thought you were. Yeah, and I thought that was like a thing now. I thought so, you were just going to bring the iPad every time. Like yeah, I thought that was going to happen. I did. But, I just kind of forgot. Well, so what is, uh, does Sierra say it's going good? She I don't asked, know. I can't see it from the outside. She just asked me why we don't have comments. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. <laughs> she's, oh. our, she's our mole on the outside. She can have, she can have, she can have. <laughs> she can have she can comment, see if it works, you know. Or is she saying, how, why aren't we are receiving disabled. it? Disabled, disabled? I think so, yeah. I put restricted, and then I put slow. So they're restricted to... Just unrestrict that. She is, I can't. I, I would have to start all over. That's another thing. Like, oh, if I do a stream again, I have to start over. Huh? Ah, you yeah, have to set all the settings. You can't dude, change settings midstream. Every time we do a first time of anything, it's like... Kings to work out, dude. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Just, just kings to work out. Just write us wow. a darn letter, okay? Email us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't think anyone even emails. Oh, dude. Got a freaking sweet guest coming up. Yeah. So, so I, I, uh, I emailed this chick. She's a mental health expert. And I told her that I want to talk about transgenders below 18 years of age. Okay. Just specifically so, just bam, shot it out. And she was like. Transgenderism in minors. That's what you're saying. Or I could yeah, or I could have just said that. Yes. <laughs> hormone therapy and that sort of thing. Whatever. She's a mental health expert. I don't know what that means. It doesn't she, say so psychologist. A... It doesn't say anything. It's just a mental health expert. And I'm okay. like, let me shoot her an email. And turns out Molly, her assistant, said, What's up? And I was like, You have an assistant? <laughs> that's crazy, that's dude. Pretty cool. But it means she's probably a doctor or something, right? I mean that's what I would I assume, assume she's assume, got like right? a master's or a doctorate or something. Or she yeah. just faked the whole thing and Molly's not a real person. And she has multi personality disorder or some crap. 
I'm just kidding. If you're watching, that's not true. <laughs> but you never know. You don't know. You know. You never know. But we want to have. I want to have her on because I want her to tell us about it. Like literally, I just want people to like know, and I want to know because I don't know crap about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, educational. You know what I mean? It'll be an educational. It will thing. be. Yeah. Because be, I think it'll be Ivan because she'll. I, in my opinion, I don't know her at all, but I feel like she would be unbiased because. Hopefully, it's be more casual. She's on national TV. You know what I mean, right? And I think she may have said opinion. this because she needs to politically, I guess, in her position. But she said advocate of LGBT plus, yeah, LBGP, LBGT, yeah, LBGT plus, yeah. That's what it said. It didn't have the Q or anything. It just said plus. Ah, I guess have plus. Huh? Pl- What's well, this plus? So I guess that means like she needs to catch up. <laughs> She okay, woke. no, okay. dude, no. So that's a that's a I'm serious. that's a future <laughs> guest, dude. <laughs> God. Oh man. All right, back to this hedge fund I'm thing. Gonna give her a what for? So, like, where's your cue, lady? So, <laughs> so, looking forward to it, though. You're the worst. I hate you. All right, so back, uh, to, back to back to Tindy's funds. diamonds and dude, going Tindy's to the diamonds. Moon. What does Tindy's mean? Chicken tenders, right? Chicken tenders, Freaking yes. I learned that, that money, this week. Dude. That was like the main thing I learned from all of this, was that tendies means chicken tenders. Yeah, so... <sighs> really? That's Just, the main thing? That's that's <laughs> it. That's what I took <laughs> I away from say, all of this. I would say most people learned the retail investor versus institutional I investor thing. Knew. No one knew. like no, Not many people knew that. Yeah. Uh, but here's the, the other... The good things that are coming from it. So two things. Two big things. Yes. SEC... SEC, so that people S Securities and Exchange Commission. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Because every time I say it, it's like SCC, but that's not how it's SEC. Anyway, whatever. It's a weird. They one. took notice, and they are going to do something. Now, whether that something leads to anything, we don't know. Um, you. because the Treasury head of Treasury, what's her name? Now it's um, Janet Yellen. Ugh. She took notice as well. I think she said. She yeah, was she be also there. had to recuse herself. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Hold on, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, she had to recuse herself from this whole situation because she is uh, tied up tied up in those hedge funds. I knew it, dude. For sure. And Always, she's, she's, dude. dude. And she's just part of the swamp. Like, she's got, she made, I think, between 5 and $7 million the, swamp. the last four years. Yeah, and Probably wait, how much? 5 to $7 million. Jeez. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Well, anywho, Money. so the the one good thing still going on that one. Uh, there's gonna be a court hearing about it. The problem is, it's just a hearing, right? Is it's it, just wait, like wait, all wait, the other wait. hearings we hear. What? Hold on, time out. Is it a court hearing or is it like a Senate judiciary? I'm committee pretty hearing? sure it's just a court hearing. I don't know. She said if we're it's in the court- judicial system, like the actual judicial system in the court system, then I have more faith. If it's like a Senate subcommittee on it's judicial affairs, the CEO affairs, of then Robinhood. I don't care. The CEO of Robinhood and yes. Wall Street Bets guy. I say Wall Street Bets guy because I don't think anyone knows his real name. <laughs> I mean, maybe they do. I don't know. He's, I mean, the main guy, the poster anonymous. child of Wall Street Bets, I'm yes. pretty sure is the guy we're talking about. Okay. Um, supposedly they're going to be there. I don't know. And but the thing is, is that she, being the girl running this thing, which is not the head of Treasury, <sighs> dead gummit, dude. I, you know what pisses me off about this app right now? This app, I can't go anywhere else. I can't oh. go to Safari. I can't go to all my stuff. Like. I'm ruined, dude. <laughs> it's over. Anyway, um, she is actually running. I'm trying to go off memory, and it's hard. Yeah. She is running the court hearing, and she's calling it Game Stopped. This is not a court hearing. It's, it's a hearing, dude. But I think that, like she said, there's yeah, a phrase it's like there. A it's like Game Stopped. Where, who wins? Yeah, who wins and loses in the case of Game Stop? Versus retail investors and institutional investors. Huh. I think it's not a it's not a name of the hearing. It's just a phrase that she's putting on top of it, kind of like a title for a stream, you know. Right. Which they shouldn't even have that. It seems yeah. unprofessional. It sounds like this is a house hearing. It's. I, it doesn't sound that serious to me, dude. Yeah. At all. Yeah. My my point is though, something is happening. Now whether that goes anywhere, we don't know. But they're still investigating freaking voter fraud, dude. Like that's that is still true. happening. You know. That is true. There's open. Uh, Rand Paul said that he's he's determined to get to the bottom of it. My problem yeah. is is that will they get to the bottom of it by midterms? Probs not, in my opinion. I think uh, I think there might be some bombshell stuff that comes out before twenty twenty two. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Matt said it here first. I think, and he has been pretty level headed the whole time. So 
I think say, uh, yeah, trust him. I would say that if the Republicans are smart, which Mitch McConnell is extremely smart. I don't agree with his decisions all of the time, obviously, but he is the smartest politician in Washington, in my opinion, for sure. Uh, I think he knows how to hold hold the ace as long as he can. You know what I mean? Like if he knows that there's voter fraud and he he's like, we gotta we gotta play this down. It's a hot election. Move on. Twenty twenty one and a half end of the summer we'll start coming back around with some of this it may not be about necessarily voter fraud but it's going to do something to really gin up the base and i feel like that's going to gin up a lot of base trump supporters and if they want trump to campaign for senate and basically congressional republicans which they do they're going to have to bring that kind of stuff up and bring up like hey if you don't want rigged elections anymore you got to vote republican you know what i mean God, that's a hard me. argument, dude. Honestly, I just don't want, you know, the swamp. I just don't want. I mean, yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't, but a lot Obviously, of people are. Right? A lot of people are also like institutional establishment types. Hedge funds. <laughs> exactly, or relieved at Joe Biden being president because it's like, oh, we we know what <clears throat> what's going to happen. Like, we're, right? It's extremely predictable. Yeah, you know, so. Well, so anyway, the second thing yes. that came from this Robin Hood, you know, the Robin Hood shenanigans. So they actually canceled trading for specific t- stocks. You could only sell them. They canceled buy orders, basically, right? Right. Some, some guy made a chart on Reddit, of course, that was like a chart of the volume versus uh, rejected trades, like trades huh. that didn't go through, right? Wow. Um, it was crazy, dude. The yeah. amount, like the amount of people trying to do it and not able to do it would have done something crazy. Like, it would have just, you know, whatever, stopped these hedge funds in their tracks or whatever you want to call it. But the second they good would, thing would be... They're probably... I don't know, like, if... Because I heard one hedge fund had had to have, like, a two and a half billion dollar bailout. I know. Yeah, they did. So what if what if it was multiple hedge funds that had to have, like... Do you think it's a problem? Do you think, you think that would ruin our lives at all? No, but I'm saying, do you think the government would bail them out? Oh, for sure. 2008. That's what I'm saying. So it's yeah. like, do we really want to do that? Do we really want to... That's the point we're trying to make, right? So uh, some of it comes down to that too, though. We're not... So no, we don't necessarily, because something would just happen for it, but we also want to bring that to light. So like we're forcing it to happen instead of the housing market. The housing market thing was caused by the hedge funds and the institutions. Uh-huh. So instead of that, we're doing it and we're saying, look... This is what happens. This is what they do every single day of the week. Yeah. And look what could happen. They have total control. And look what could happen. Yeah. And then we're like, this is it right here. And that's what that's what they're trying to get at here. And I, I I'm fully behind that. I'm fully agree with it. However, I, I go I'm behind the I go, message, but not necessarily the method. Like it's funny, but it's also very it's damaging. Not funny at all. It's funny, like. In an ironic sort oh, of way. Because they, they, they can make do it this. funny, dude. They make it fun. They want people to be involved. So they're going to be yeah. like tendies and diamonds and, you know, whatever, right? To the moon, you know. But it's also funny that. that these hedge hedge funds got totally like flipped on their heads completely. Yeah. But it's also dangerous because they have so much control. It's like, I don't know. It's How else? Cause so I, I can kind of see where you're coming from. You know what I mean? How else are you going to do it? What else are you going to do? You know, it's like a civil war scenario, right? I get right? that, yeah. You think about that? Yeah. Like, what do we do when it comes down to freedom of speech actually over, which it kind of already is. You can be sued for anything now. If I sue you because you said something wrong, that's isn't that kind of the same thing? And I win. What the, what the heck is that? That's not freedom of speech. I mean... Same thing yeah. with guns, though. Guns are kind of there, I guess. You can own plenty of guns now. You can own plenty of guns that are legal, so I think we're still good. But when it comes down to it, you know, what are we going to do? Something that's rash? Probably. Yeah, I mean... Is there no- a smart way as a regular common citizen to bring light to a situation like that? Uh... Not that's going to be as effective as that, you know what I mean? Right. Like they're they're doing it every day by posting on Reddit and like everyone knows about it. But then they're like, hey, what if we did this? Then it then it would be on the news. Then it would be g- going out to people that aren't on Reddit necessarily. So they are getting the word out pretty pretty well. But 
at the same I agree. time, it's just it's a risky move. So back into the freaking second thing, dude. I still can't like. We just we are uh, we are an ADD group of people here. <laughs> yeah. So apologies. I actually like it. It's exciting. It is. Anyway, second thing. Keep you on your toes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> more people are involved in trading. Simple as that. It's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing for more retail investors to be in the market. Because in order to get our way, our way being a fair market that's actually supposed to be based on supply and demand and is, uh-huh. in order to get our way like that, we need to have more retail investors. And I think that's what Reddit saw. Or Reddit made, Reddit created mm. this. Uh, Wall Street Bets anyway created this movement for people to join in and become a part of it because there is actually something they could do. And for once, they didn't have to just like donate money and feel like they did something and not see anything through. Yeah, they could quote unquote donate money, buy a stock, and see it, and see the stuff, see the the repercussions and the the fruits and everything else from that, from what they're doing, you know? And I think that's why so many people were behind it. Also, I feel like people needed a movement. Like, people just needed a movement. Like, people needed uh, something to join in on because of the last year. Yeah. Like, 2020 ramped up everybody to get ready to freaking get on Wall Street bets and, you know, buy GameStop, yeah, I guess, sure. you know? I think people are just full of uh, angst right now in general. You know what I mean? Yeah, there. you're freaking if you're not if you're <laughs> if you're abiding by the rules, you're cooped up in your house all day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which sucks. Like mentally and physically and pretty like socially it's like social distancing is such a crazy term that's been so normalized. It's really creepy. Oh my god, speaking of that, dude. I'm seeing articles, of course, come out about masks and like they're triple like mask. pushing this, yeah, double mask, triple mask. Like, what are we doing, uh, dude? Yeah, what? what are we doing? Like, yeah, who it's cares? Who? What is gonna? It's so bizarre. Uh, I don't know what I think about it, honestly. I do know what I think about it. I'd piss a lot of people off though, so I'm just gonna like cruise through that yeah, one. Yeah, we'll just gloss over COVID. It's ridiculous, right man. It is. What is there? What's the third thing? There was there was two things, two good That's things that it? came from it. The third thing being bad ish. Well, wait, I guess, what's going to the moon? About? My my controversial opinion on that is that I actually still am okay with Robin Hood. Yeah, I know everyone else is like, oh my gosh, I hate them, blah blah blah. But here's the thing, I, here's the deal. It's I was always taught, always told. What are you looking for? Matches. Oh right, I was always taught, always told, whatever to uh, not bite the hand that feeds you. What do you mean? How is that Robin Hood? Because like I said, they have backers. They have people that invest in them. They give them money. They give them, quote unquote, life. See, that's what I'm saying. And they control it. That's why Robin Hood shut off all of the I know. Wh- I, we know yeah. that's why. But I'm saying also, what what position are they in? Like, how would you handle that? You know what I mean? Because you don't bite the hand that feeds you, right? Unless you don't want to be fed anymore. So, I'm so wondering wait, if, so, so would retail investors really provide that for Robin Hood? You know, that, obviously not, because if if Robinhood really cared about retail investors, they would let them trade. Yeah, I, they don't. I, they care yeah, about no, they care about the agree. hedge funds, the people that back them, the people that really get their money from Robinhood and that Robinhood really profits from. They don't profit off some guy joining from his mom's basement making free trades, you know, with two thousand bucks or whatever. So I. Actually got a uh, email from Robin Hood, right? Did you? Yeah, yeah. A note from Robin Hood. Why we had to take action. I'll go ahead and read it to the uh, to the fans. You know, I don't know how many people are watching. I can't see that because I'm not on actual Facebook. Fifty-seven hundred. You wish. <laughs> I freaking wish. That'd be sweet. Pretty cool. We wanted to reach out to you after a transformative week in the markets to answer a question we know many of you are asking. Why did Robinhood limit certain stocks? We understand that the temporary limits we placed on certain stocks this past week were frustrating for many, especially since we built Robinhood to expand access to investing. 
We have always sought to put our customers first, and we want to be want you to be able to invest on your own terms. Oh well, pff, imagine that. Yeah. Guess what didn't happen this last week and the week before that even? They were limiting crap. Just today, I I'm pretty sure just today they upped the limit. There's still a limit on it. It's up to 500 shares of GameStop and up to I think 50 something hundred shares of AMC available. Huh. Are people still buying it? Like, is this, I haven't really been paying attention. Yeah, we're still trying to. Yeah, people on Reddit are still trying to get this thing going. Huh. Like, so whenever you said you were like, I think it's going to keep going, which I'll get to that in a second. To help explain what happened and why we had to take action, we wrote a letter to our customers. That's me, I guess. T- and captured the key understandings for you below, which, by the way, I took all my money out of Robinhood and put it in Fidelity because um, I've always used Fidelity. I love Fidelity. If I was an affiliate Fidelity, this would be the ad right here. <laughs> use Fidelity. They never limited anything. Huh. For Robinhood to operate, we must meet clearinghouse deposit requirements to support customer trades. So that basically is their bank, right? Yeah. Deposit requirements are to ter- determined in part by how much stock a firm's customers hold. If a firm's customers' holdings are volatile, a.k.a. GameStop, AMC, yes. Nokia, <laughs> yes, a broker in this instance, Robinhood, is obligated to meet higher deposit requirements. Last week, in part due to the volatility in some popular stocks, Robinhood's deposit requirements rose tenfold. The combination of the deposit increase and the extraordinary increase in volume on these particular symbols led us to put temporary buying restrictions in place on a small number of those stocks. So Robinhood just didn't have the capital to back the trades. They did not have trades. it. That's they didn't all. have it. It's basically all that. We had to take steps to limit buying in those volatile stocks to ensure we could comfortably meet our deposit obligations. We didn't want to stop people from buying stocks, and we certainly weren't trying to help hedge funds we hope you take away that from this huh. oh we hope you take away this okay yeah at robin hood we stand with everyday investors participating in the markets standing by our robin hood community means being there for our customers through any trading environment will continue to improve as we break down barriers in the financial system to open it for all thank you for being a part of the robin hood community big eye roll Big eye roll, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. come on. You couldn't have given us, like, something In the words a little bit of better. the great Governor Ron DeSantis, you can whiz on my leg, but don't tell me it's raining, okay? <laughs> what? He literally <laughs> just said that. Hilarious. Oh, the governor gosh. of Florida? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'd... You can whiz on my leg. Don't tell me it's raining. God. <laughs> what the <laughs> heck, dude? Fantastic. Dang, son. We're almost 30 minutes into this live video. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's crazy, man. It just goes by fast, I it guess. It does. I mean, I'm cool with it. Hmm. Hmm. So uh, how long do you think all this is going to last? you think it's going to keep going on for, I think it's going to last at least a few more months. Of this like trading stuff? Really trying, yeah. Well, yeah, because we still have that hearing, right? And I think I think it depends on what happens at that hearing. Like if we, if that hearing goes well, and trust me, Redditors all over publicity. the place will be looking at it. If we get that, then we're, I think we're good, you know? That's what I think, anyway. I don't know. Maybe I can run this. <gasps> Heck yeah, Are dude. Are you free? Huh? <laughs> You're free now? <laughs> dude, I'm free as a freaking... A boy? I was going to say cucumber for some reason. Wow. All right, guys. Quick little break here. Uh, I've got to do a quick shout-out for one of my dear friends that hit me up a few months ago. Uh, his name's Jacob. Um, really cool guy. This is for you. One of his dear friends, one of his dear friends uh, in, I guess it's going to be in Idaho or where he's at, um, is Nicole. She's fighting cancer. Uh, the deal with that is she has a GoFundMe, and she's trying to raise $100,000 for medical costs because they suck. They're a lot of money, right? Cancer medical industry is, is sucks. You know, we need to talk about medical industry or just, just like the cost of cancer. We need to talk about all episode. that stuff. Cost of cancer and how like it's all fake. I'd be down for that. Yeah, that'd be a deep, like, that would be a, no, that would be no a deep way. dive for It'd sure. I'm just like for sure, that yeah. sounds like a 2-hour episode. <laughs> we least. know there's aliens, but we can't cure your cancer. Yeah. There's your there's sorry, there's your uh, there's your snippet. I'm not going to go into it any further. That's crazy to talk about that right now and that takes away from the actual point of this whole thing. <laughs> I was going to say the GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay. Gosh, ADD, dude. Anyway, Guys, help her out. Please help her husband out as well. Um, 
Joshua Solis as the organizer. If you guys want to check that out, I'll have the link for the GoFundMe in the show notes, and I'll probably post a link uh, tomorrow on Facebook and our Instagram, Toasty.Podcast. You guys should follow it um, to find out more about that. And uh, there's that, you know. Yeah. So do what you can. Any amount helps. Any of it. CEO of Robinhood. (laughs) Here's his comments after the whole thing happened. Most of our customers are, you know, what's called buy and hold. (laughs) Without speaking specifically to GameStop, Robinhood has processes that respond to increase... Like increases that. in volatility in certain names by doing things like raising the margin requirements. I didn't know what this guy looked like. I've never seen him before. And I'm looking at him now, and I'm like, oof, what a guy. He looks like uh, a a mix between. Hold on. I picture a guy like just look like a total tool. Like I really wish I could screen share, but I'm not smart enough yet on the streaming thing to do that. Sorry, guys. Tool. Go ahead. He, well, kind of, I, not really, honestly. He doesn't look like a tool. I'm not going to say that about him. You know, it looks like he could be a cool guy. But it's a mixture of young Steve Jobs, you know, longer hair, and uh, WeWork um, CEO dude. Because he looks like he might smoke weed, but he also looks like, you know, Steve Jobs, you know, like straight Steve edge. Steve Jobs Bow. never smoked weed. Come on. Dude, that's not what I meant, dude. <laughs> I meant like publicly obvious. Gosh, uh, gotcha. man. Yeah, like Snoop Dogg. Yeah, <laughs> or the WeWork CEO. Okay, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. Uh, I don't know WeWork. What is that? It's that. It's the company that like went under. I think it might still exist. I'm not sure. Honestly, I stopped looking at it after uh, all that crap went downhill. SoftBank invested in it. SoftBank's an investment cool. firm or a, a venture capitalist firm, ah. and it ve- invested in this WeWork. And WeWork leases out office space for working. Getting okay. There's other there's familiar. other companies that do the same thing, yeah. right? And they just did it, and they did it. Honestly, I thought they did it pretty well, but uh, apparently not. Apparently they, but they just are grew terrible. too fast for their own good. Yeah, didn't take care. Grew of up too fast for their own good. Yeah, sad, sad, sad. Like Michael Jackson. Um, there's there's a uh, it's recent Reddit. I wanted to give you guys the recent Reddit post, but uh, I'm trying to find it. So I'm sorry, guys. Trying to find it. What is it uh, regarding? Um, I mean, obviously, hedge funds. Yeah, it just it's regarding but, uh, like it's it's an update for what they said today ah. about it, right? Um, all I'm gonna do is bam. Wall, street. What do we bets. do? Reddit overlords. Yeah, I don't know. There's only uh. There's only so much momentum I feel like this has Damn, at the same right. time. And I feel like they're going to have to really work to like grab outside people that aren't on Reddit necessarily to they're going to need more people because as you think so? How yes. many how, I really wonder how many people are actually even in it. I I thought it was like tons and tons. No. And people the thing is, Can't is imagine that, it's that many. Really? The thing is is that even people off Reddit are seeing it cuz it's being shared so much. That's what I'm saying. Like They're people that I that I talk to on the daily are like, larger... "Hey, did you hear about this?" And I'm like, "Oh, wow, yeah. How did you hear about it?" From TikTok or from freaking Facebook or whatever, it doesn't matter. It got yeah, shared a lot. Exactly. So I think we're good there. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's all over it's all over the news. Every every news outlet's covering it. Yeah, and cable, you know what's funny? Cable news, radio. Just whatever. like the election, there is an air an atmosphere around every news article that writes about it that is leaning toward like the hedge fund, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. It's biased. Yeah. You can tell. And you're For like, sure. dude, again? Like, when, I dude? Mean, you just have to look at who owns the newspaper, you know? And where where are those newspapers' retirement plans, you know? It's all tied together. It's all tied together. It's all tied together. Oh, all here's those, one. All the big Damn, institutions rely on each other way too much. So now it's we're talking about uh, the outcomes here. This was seven hours ago. People in this sub, which is uh, Wall Street Wall Street bets, mm-hmm. need to understand that you only invest with the money you can afford to lose. <laughs> Getting loans for buying stocks. Oh, that's dumb. Well, it's called margin, and in some instances it can work. Anyway, whatever. Well. Getting loans for buy I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so Getting loans for buying stocks or putting your life savings into this is not a great choice. 
So it's saying to the new members of the sub, dude, this this the amount of members grew tenfold like overnight. It went from like a mil to like six mil, I think. Pretty sure. Okay, that's a pretty substantial. I, I can of go. People. I can actually go to the go to the sub and just see real quick. Huh. I mean, eight point six million members, and they did not have that many. It was like one million. It was yeah. like not that. That's insanity, dude. That's quick. And it was fa- it was like within a week it was like, bloop, and that's what I'm saying. You think you, you say there needs to be more people behind it, but dude, well, eight point six people. million people, and let's say and some of those people acting, are rich, you know? Yeah, exactly. And if they're all acting, is that what you said? <laughs> oh, they're actually getting like into being it. not active, yeah, yeah. <laughs> active, active. Yes, yes, yes. Here's an update on the on the WSB coup de de ta de ta coup de ta coup de ta. Sorry. For those who see my top detective badge but don't know me, I'm the asshole who made videos this post is talking about. If you just subscribe to, no doubt you'll see it, blah, blah, blah. While you were sleeping last night, moderators who wanted to profit from this community removed the moderators you know and love. They were replaced with brand new accounts. Literally minutes old. It was a coup. The long and short of it is, there was a a movie deal. In fact, there was more than one. There were dollar signs in their eyes. The GameStop catalyst that propelled our community. This is a whole new thing. I'm just now, I didn't know this was, this happened. Yeah, what is going on? So basically what he's saying is moderators of Wall Street Bets uh-huh. wanted to make money and kicked out other moderators and replaced their accounts with newly like active accounts huh. overnight. Whoa. Basically people that wanted to make money, people that didn't want to make money split. And so now Wall Street Bets is apparently, you know, just people money for movie deals because they were they were talking about they were getting movies for this whole thing, dude. Like this is a this is gonna be a movie now. You know the Big Short what? about freaking housing market crisis yeah. or whatever. I don't think it's over. Back to your original question that started this whole freaking. Well, if there's fiasco, gonna be a movie about it. I don't think it's over because there's gonna be a movie about it. Like literally, yeah. I think that's the reason. Like I think that I think that we've got months to go. And then they're going to be going in whatever stock they want to go in. Like you were saying, you were like, oh, they're going to be in any random stock. It doesn't really matter. Whatever they want to choose, they're going to be in it. That's what they're going to do. They're going to keep doing it. They're just going to keep doing it. Attack, 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 attack. That's what I think. But, but people like me that aren't really, like I'm not, like I'm about it. I'm so about it. I want to be behind them 100%. That's awesome. However, I don't have that much money to just throw around in my retirement to like freaking, which I I mean, I don't, I could throw the money around. Do I want to? I don't know. I'm down to supply for AMC and Nokia and like, they'll see this thing through and let's just do it. I know I'm down. I get it. I'm not worried about it. The whole point was not for the money, but I don't know if I'm just going to keep doing that and doing that and doing that because I think there's going to be thousands of people like me, thousands of people like me that aren't going to do it either. (laughs) Well, that but thousands <laughs> of people like me that aren't going to do that. Yeah. Right? Like they're not they're not down. I mean, like five people I know, like close to me that were just like, "I sold. I got out of it. I'm done." I was like, "Damn. That's quick." I'm not faulting them because they're literally doing what you're supposed to do with stocks yeah. in a way. It Buy went up so it high. went up over 100%. Dude, I have a rule when I'm investing and it's literally 40% you start selling. You don't sell all of it. But if it's at sixty plus, you're you're trying to get out faster and faster. Huh. I, d- I don't care if I if it goes to one hundred twenty percent. But you lost. Oh my gosh, you could have gotten double. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I have a rule. I keep the rule, and I do it every time, huh. no matter what. Because that's that's how you, that's the, that's one of the tricks, right? Yeah. Not trick actually. That's one of the the points. You don't use a trick. You use a freaking rule. Yeah. <laughs> There's a rule book, and you just go with that. Anyway, I'm getting too far into that. That's not that's not this podcast. That's the last podcast. Different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me keep reading this. The long and short of it is, there was a movie deal. In fact, there were several. Uh, the GameStop catalyst that propelled our community to over 8 million members attracted media attention. Naturally, it's no secret, he who must not be named sold out, as he has in the past. Huh. And some of the bad moderators were just a little behind him. Who is this? I wonder who he's referring to. Uh, there's a link. Hold on. I, hold on. For this reason, some moderators are no longer with us. 
They tried to go behind other moderators' backs to secure money for themselves and monetize this subreddit. They even went as far as to establish a website, Blomberg.com, to intercept all media traffic so they themselves could profit. Some of the moderators who grew this community, like ZJZ, still have not been added back. Perhaps they will be back in the future. The good news is the right moderators, the mods you all know and love, are coming back. And some already are here. People I know wouldn't take a dime are taking back control. Oh, let me read that again. That was bad. People I know that wouldn't take a dime are taking back control. There we go. <laughs> One meme-filled shit post at a time. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay, all right. Those quotes, not mine. <laughs> Anywho, he who must not be named still has a movie deal, so I leave you with this question. How do you feel about a guy who has been scamming people for most of his adult life getting paid six figures for a movie deal partially about scamming members of Wall Street Bets? And that's the community post he made. There's going to be a movie about this movie. Huh? I said there's going to be a movie about the movie. This is insane. Dude, Reddit's so crazy, man. The thing is, is that Reddit was always Reddit, this crazy. It's very dramatic. It is super dramatic. Me. But it's like now everyone's everyone's like knows what it's about. Now, just like investing, everyone's into it. You know what I mean? That's crazy, man. And that is pretty much what I have. If you guys wanted a quick little uh, rundown of what a hedge fund is, I can give that to you. Hedge fund is a pooled investment fund that trades in relatively liquid assets and is able to make extensive use of more complex trading, portfolio construction, and risk management techniques to improve performance, such as short selling, leverage, and derivatives. Financial regulators generally restrict hedge fund marketing except to institutional investors high net worth individuals, and others who are considered sufficiently sophisticated. Hedge funds are regarded as alternative investments. Hmm. So that's the uh, basic definition for you guys, a group, group of people that decide they're going to do it. The thing is is that they normally, nowadays it's modern, modern hedge funds use um, computers a lot. A lot of computers, algorithms to trade. They do that like Ray Dalio did in the freaking 70s and 80s to make money. Yeah. He pioneered that whole thing, right? Which is awesome. To me. Okay, I am down for capitalism, and that's awesome. They figured out a way to beat that system, and that's literally America. If you can figure yeah. out a way to beat that system, so be it. I mean, as long as it's legal. As long as it's legal. <laughs> and it's borderline not legal, because every time they get into a situation where it's not, they are able to turn it around by paying money. Yeah. So, I mean, wowzers. This is all just very, it's all too volatile for me. I'm a very conservative investor. If I ever get good money, you know, I'm just going to buy land. Let that double in value over 20 years. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Land is good. Land didn't have a housing market crash. It was just the houses. (laughs) Right. Yep. yep. Um, Just the buildings. That's the other thing too. Is like this whole thing lead like goes back to that. Like that's the, one of the things they're trying to get back at people for, right? Because hedge funds and everything else were trying to get bailed out, right? When the housing market crashed, mm-hmm. they were saying we need to be bailed out for the common people, because the common people will be hurt. But that's not exactly true. Mm. The common people were already hurt. They would be hurt regardless. So hedge funds were able to get their way and get bailed out, uh-huh. and thousands, millions lost their jobs, and families went to shambles, and people became alcoholics. So that's kind of another thing that brings up this like vibe to get you know to do get this. something done, yeah, to right? change things. It's interesting, but like I said, this would not happen if Trump was in office, and that sucks. So. With that, do you have anything else to add? Uh, ooh, we should add another Biden prediction. We should make that like a theme. Biden predictions? <laughs> Let's do a more near term, because <laughs> all my predictions are like two years from now. <laughs> okay, let's see. Dude, this is all you, dude. The Biden prediction for today. For today, for this week. Usually I put this on TikTok. Hold on one second. Oh, we're, do, we're like double streaming here? I guess we're only streaming one and then TikTok and the other. I guess it's not technically a stream, is it? I don't know. What What do you mean? What? What are you talking about? Don't worry about it. Uh, 
I don't even know what my prediction is going to be. This is a stream, yeah. It's just not like a. I'm not playing a game. You don't, know. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't. I don't have my predictions ready. It's not even close. What? I don't. I don't know it. You yes. said you wanted to do a prediction. I and you don't do want to do a prediction. But I don't know what it is yet. It's gonna come to me. It's okay. like a. It's like a muse. Like it just strikes you. Yeah, but is it gonna strike you in the next thirty seconds it, or not? Something will happen. <laughs> thirty seconds. Is that all I have left? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, come uh, on, man. I like, I you just, already did, did like a. I'm recording it. No, no, no. I'm not doing that anymore. By the way, I'm just gonna record it on my freaking phone and then put it up there. I. I don't know what I was doing. I'm an idiot. Whatever. That's the way to do it. Anywho, yeah, I, I think that, um, let's see, let's think about this. We've got executive orders freaking flying off the shelves. You already said he's trying to get all of these done because in two years he's outskis. Now, my thing is, what is next for JB. Kamala Harris? Oh, Kamala. Ooh, KH, huh? Let's just assume at this point your predictions She's are not, real. Dude, my, okay. If 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 Biden my, is resigning, what happens? This is the most solid prediction yet. It's going to be real easy. Kamala Harris is going to be the most drama-free VP until she's president, which will happen. She's going to be. That's it. It's all I need. She's going to be good. like, keep her head above everything and just be chill. And if someone says, "How are you feeling today?" she's going to go, "Great, bye." What do you think is going to? happen? I don't have time. Bye. She's going to steer clear of. Any decision making, and she's just gonna coast. She's gonna coast if she's smart, which she is, and she's ruthless. She's just gonna coast. Just chill out. Oh yeah, let she's the not old be man freaking croak, and then you'll be in. You'll be in office. That's what's gonna happen. I mean, I mean, or he's gonna get twenty fifth amendment out because they they've been talking about that. They're ready to do it to Trump when a guy who's actually mentally incapacitated is in office. It's only a matter of time. It's not going to last four years. He couldn't even put a pin in his coat pocket. Did you see that little video? <laughs> it is hilarious. He's sitting there like, like this. <laughs> couldn't do it, huh? It's like staring, dude. Staring at Shh. his jacket, like, dude. Just put the pin down on the table. You're. The president of the United States, you're always on camera. Like, I don't think he cared uh, about that, though, you know? I just don't think he has the... It's weird, man. I don't think he has the awareness. I really don't. I don't think he knows what he looks like on camera. I don't think he... Because he's always coughing into his hand. You know what I mean? All yeah. the time. Like, all the this time. Is like a, this is a good little segment. I'm going to clip this and put it on YouTube. <laughs> and he's... Uh, Matty B rants. It is a rant. It's just, I'm fine with that. I just, there's no way... There's no way the guy can handle the job for that long. I mean, I think he's honestly being president for okay, about six hours what a is day it? tops, and then he's just kind of doing softball stuff. And people are putting stuff in front of him to sign. He literally signed an executive order and literally said, I don't know what I'm signing. Why do you, he said that? That yes, happened? Yes. When did that happen? It's on tape. Really? Yes. I say tape like I'm 80 years old. But it's on it's on I video. I mean, he's ninety, so right. yeah, it's on video, and he's literally he literally looks around, and goes, "I don't know what I'm signing." Signs it anyway, whatever. Next, what else did y'all bring me to sign? Come on, like, dude, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, when tr- at least when Trump signed an executive order, he was like made a kind of a, of an event, put his big bold signature on it, showed it to everyone. Like, look what I just signed. Was proud of it. This guy is just sitting at his freaking desk, signing away. I don't even know. He's got this big old stack of executive orders like it's just regular old paperwork. I'm getting a new car, buying a house. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right. Next thing you know, he gives away deeds to like everything he has. And he's like, yeah, oh, right? crap. What I'm happened? Just gonna be like, I'm you just going to put like a $10,000 check. Why not? $100,000 check right in front of me. Just like, just. Sign that. Yeah, okay, that was an executive order to <laughs> make women men. <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> and boom! Next thing you know, Maddie B's got a hundred grand in the bank. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, dude. But what happens if I have an actual question? Like, what happened? What? How does a president yeah. resign? What do you mean? How? How does that work? He just says, oh, "I'm out. Peace." Has yeah. it happened before? Yeah. Richard Nixon resigned in 1974. I- That's the only time in U.S. history he resigned. He said. He went on national TV. He wrote a letter of resignation. There's a 
I believe there is a more formal process. I'm not sh exactly sure. But basically, you could just say, I'm not president anymore. Vice president, president. He gets to pick a new VP. That's what happened. Gerald Ford became president, and I think he picked Rockefeller. Why did he do that? Nixon? Because he was going to be convicted of... Uh, convicted during the Watergate scandal of, of uh, obstruction of justice. Mm. Wowzers. All right, well, we're at 50 minutes, so i got to get the thing wrapped up. So, yeah, it's been real. It's been toasty. It's been fun. It's been has real it, toasty fun. Has it been real fun? <laughs> <laughs> we're figuring it out, guys. Whatever, dude. You're <laughs> Whatever, dude. All right, guys. Stay tuned for next time. Stay toasty. Stay toasty. <laughs> <laughs> Toasty.